one page describe all the information that I really need to know? <coughs> Try it. Yeah, I, I can't believe that uh, <laughs> nobody, no, nobody can keep everything in. It's, uh, it's no, nobody can uh, know everything about technologies, about the uh, markets, about everything. Okay. <laughs> no, you, you are correct. It takes a lot more information than what is there on a business model. But when you, when you become comfortable using that business model on one page, you then say, I don't need these other ten pages. I only need two pages. Gee, maybe I only need one page. <laughs> you will get used to, to handling that, uh, that information correctly. But you're right, it takes a lot of information and the business model canvas is a summary. Yeah. But from that one page, you can then begin to manage and the, the growth of the business because you say, I want to add more customers. What does that mean for channels? What do I have to add? What about partners? Now, all on one page, rather than flipping several pages, where did I put that? Where did I say that? It's all right there. And you can make additions to it. Then, if you feel the need to add these descriptions, you can. But as you become more comfortable using that business model, you will be more comfortable without all of the other pages. Try it. You'll get used to it. It won't won't come right off, but uh, you know you won't be able to do it probably the first time. But it'll come more naturally to you. Uh, oh, it's, it's a very powerful model. Questions? Okay. Okay. Uh, today, countries uh, compete with projects. With projects, with each other to create opportunities for young smart people. What advice could you give to? Uh, Men see more opportunities, for example, in USA than in Russia. Be flexible. Um, the opportunity may uh, be present in the United States, let's use that as an example, uh, over Russia for now, but that may change. Be flexible. One of the things about young people today, in today's world, is the opportunity to work in different countries is really available. Uh, much more available, I think, than in years past. So if you're flexible in, uh, in pursuing your career, then you will have great opportunities. For example, I've lived in three different countries, well, four, Argentina, the Philippines and Japan. I've traveled, I still travel to China. I live in America now, but I've lived in these other countries and I've had some terrific uh, experiences and opportunities. Be flexible. Uh, be willing to go where there's opportunity and if that opportunity changes, then you can move back. You can move to another location. You'll always are you from Belarus? You're always going to be Belarusian, and you should be proud of that. But you can take your experience and knowledge and apply it in the U.S., in South America, in Poland, in England, in Russia, wherever it might be. And be willing to be flexible like that, to pursue it. That would be the advice I have. Don't be afraid just because it's in a different country. You're always going to be Belarusian, and this will always be home. Good advice. Yeah. Yes, sir. Um, yes. And is it possible actually to avoid the situation when the problem with the previous version was bad, the better than the, better than the new one? one. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Is it possible to avoid the situation or what is but we're it, it, yeah, yeah, that's that's the problem. Um, in order to enjoy the rapid improvements, you've got to have customer feedback. So 
so you need to deploy the new technology at least among some customers. But the answer is you can minimize. You can you can make it smaller, but you I don't know that you can entirely avoid that. What you're trying to do is to make it so that your your first version is peaking here and you've introduced the second version and it quickly surpasses the other version. And so you want to make that as small as possible uh, and, and you get better at that as you've introduced more products. I don't know that you ever completely avoid it, um, especially in software. Yeah. All, of, all of you know that software is, it's like is a problem. Uh, I'm, I'm chairman of a uh, company now that, that develops software, and we're, we just released version 4 of our product. It's called Forensics Toolkit 4, FTK4. Uh, we had a few problems with it the early this year when we released it. Hopefully now we're beyond FTK3 in our performance. But there's always that, you know, you, you try to make that as short as possible. I don't know that you ever completely avoid it. Where are you from? Um, actually, I'm Korean, but um, I was born in the You were born here? Yes. Oh, wow. Well, I've been to Korea many times. I used to go into Seoul. When I lived in Tokyo, I, I uh, would get into Seoul all the time. Good for you. Thank you. Good to have you here. Other questions? Anybody? Yeah. Uh, no, the technology aspect. Uh, you gave us some impressive examples uh, of uh, some block cream or uh, yeah. I can give you many others. Screens. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, <laughs> it would be nice to hear more. But uh, you told about um, protein now mm -hmm. that you're working on, and uh, <laughs> it happened that I'm reading a book about evolution. That book from this guy. <laughs> well, he wrote the book. Uh, no, no. <laughs> oh. <laughs> he just bought it. <laughs> oh, he bought the book. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, so, and uh, it's written there that, uh, that it's explored that the DNAs, RNAs, and uh, proteins. Protein. Mm -hmm. So, proteins can't keep information. Uh, there are some molecules uh, that can contain only RNA. RNA, but no, no, there are no that can con contain only proteins. It's, and it's it's written there. So, is it really s so big uh, invention? Well, see, that's where we would begin to challenge the premise of the book you're reading. At one time, DNA was not understood. Okay. Yeah. Maybe we are discovering new roles and new power of protein that will change what this book is saying. I don't know that, but I do know that the peptides that we are examining in the protein molecules uh, are, are, we are discovering some very powerful new ways of identifying people on the basis of protein peptide molecules. This may change science. I don't know. But, uh, but we're in the process of looking. So far, we have been very successful. Uh, we've got a lot more to do, but that's just one example of how new technology and new capability to analyze uh, science may actually change the way we view things. Uh, do that scientists use um, very expensive uh, equipment? equipment? Oh, yeah. yes. Yeah, it's Mass expensive. spectrometers. It's yeah, they cost about a million dollars a piece. It's yes. It's not possible. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it, it's the, possible. Yeah, it's possible, actually. I mean, there, there would there be, yeah, there are some places in Belarus, I'm sure, that have mass spec, uh, mass spectrometry. The uh, older versions. Yeah, maybe the older version. <laughs> yeah. we, we are actually working with one of the uh, national laboratories in America that has some very powerful machinery. 
so yeah we're doing some interesting new things will it lead to new discoveries that may change the way we view current science I don't know but it's possible all of that's possible because of the way technology changes And uh, you had a lot of examples. One more impressive to, <laughs> to keep in mind and to tell to others. Uh, how many of you have ever heard of a virtual private server? Virtual mm -hmm. private server. <coughs> in web hosting, in, uh, in, you know, on the internet. Uh, virtual private network. No, or virtual private server. server. In web hosting, do you, do you mean cloud servers? Uh, no, it's not. It's it's not a cloud service. It's uh, uh, something that came before cloud service. So virtual uh, cloud server. It's like a server that stands somewhere in the uh, in the place. Okay, basically it's this. You can have a server sitting in a data center, and by making certain changes. <coughs> to the operating uh, system. We call it hacking the kernel. You know what hacking is. Yeah. All of you know what hacking is. <laughs> All of you are very good at hacking because that's what you learn in, in IT. Okay, uh, I don't know how to do it, but I know people who are very good at it. Um, we call it hacking the kernel. We changed the operating system so that I could have all of you serviced on one server, but it looks like to you, you have the entire server's strength in your account. Okay, now, what that allows us to do is we were in the hosting business. The company I was president of became the world's largest web hosting company in the year 2000. Go David. Okay, no. No, this was before GoDaddy. It was called Vario. Okay. Now, other companies are much larger than Vario now, but go back 12 years. We were the largest in the world, and here's how we did it. We took this new technology that allowed us to hack the kernel, and we applied that technology to web hosting so that I could, could buy one server the resource, that's a cost. The resource is the server. But then the customers, all of you, could be put on, your websites could be put on that one server. I make one investment and service all of you. And because of the technology, you thought you had a private server. So we called it a virtual private server. Because you didn't have a private server, you had a virtual private server. Now today, if you were to do a search <coughs> on the term virtual private server, many companies now say they have a virtual private server. But I know who invented it. <laughs> we did. Our company did. And, uh, and we are the inventors of that. We we took the technology and then applied it to a business and said, here's how we can do it. So we wound up by the year 2000, we had almost a million business accounts, business websites that we were hosting. Now, these are the early days of the internet. Today, many other companies are larger, but back then we were the world leader. And we did it on the basis of a virtual private server. That's an example of a business application. And it made the company very valuable. We sold the company for a lot of money. Okay, so um, most your And why are we in business? Sorry? Why are we in business? <laughs> to make money. Yeah. Yeah. All right. <laughs> just, 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 just so we know. <laughs> We course, made the world yeah, better. By making money. Yeah. By, we made a little money, but we made the world better. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. So, uh, most of your experience is to come to company, to grow their, uh, to make money. To grow the business to grow and the sell business, it. To grow the business, sell it, and then 
pick I've, up another company? Yes, right? that's, I've done that several times. <laughs> okay, so... That's what, what I do. <laughs> <laughs> what is the next company? Do you know? Uh, yeah, we've got one going now. Uh, this is one, I mentioned it briefly, it's called Access Data. Mm -hmm. You can Google it, uh, do a search on it, Access Data, all one word, Access, A-C-C-E-S-S-D-A-T-A. -S -S yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm the chairman of the board, I used to be the CEO, but we raised some money and brought in some really smart young people to run the company. So I got out of the way. But I am chairman, and I'm a significant shareholder. In the last uh, four or five years, we've taken the company from basically a startup to almost 100 million in sales worldwide. And uh, we're looking in the next two years to sell that company. <laughs> so we have one working. And I've got another one that we're working on already. In oil and gas drilling, you would know something about oil and gas drilling because they have so much of it next door in Russia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, so uh, do you involve your children or grandchildren in the uh, business? Uh, business? I, have, I have a little, but... Uh, uh, why, why don't? I mean that if you say uh, just a little, so what about others? Uh, why, why don't they see how they Well, are I, have a, I have a daughter, for example, who is a doctor. She didn't want to have anything to do with business. Oh, yeah. <laughs> she was more interested in helping the world, yeah. and she has become a doctor. Um, I do some business with, with uh, my sons and one of my daughters, but not all. I have a son who is a hearing specialist. We call it an audiologist and a speech therapist. He helps young children that have hearing and speech problems. And he loves doing that. And, and we do a little business together. We own some properties together. But uh, basically, he enjoys what he does. I mean that uh, there is American dream, right? Uh, first, it's uh, to buy your own home, uh, mm -hmm. host. Uh, then uh, family, uh, some children, uh, two, three, eight. <laughs> and yeah, I have a big family. <laughs> yeah, and the third one is to make your own business. So, uh, yeah. I guess I've had the American dream. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you already had it. <laughs> I've, I've had it uh, a few times, and we're going to keep doing it. <laughs> Okay, you mean children? <laughs> no, no more children. <laughs> no, more, no, no more children. <laughs> I leave that to my children. <laughs> okay. Okay. Other okay, questions? What um, technical areas are now interesting for business? I think the, the real interesting areas for business, number one is IT. Everything, everything is being digitized. So there's great opportunity. But but there are some significant advancements in biology and chemistry, especially as it relates to uh, examination of disease. I think that we're closing in on the ability to cure cancers, for example. Uh, and the research that's being done in biology and chemistry will, will greatly advance uh, in, in the area of medicine. And so I'm very excited about uh, the improvements that are being made there. So, yeah, you know, scientific things, uh, biology and chemistry, I'm very excited about. IT, because everything is being put on computers. I mean, we carry them around now. You know, we, we carry all kinds of information. Uh, being able to do that is, is a direct result of the kind of work that you do because it wouldn't work if you didn't do your work right. So there's huge opportunities in the area of IT and I think biology and chemistry. I, I'm sure that physics, uh, there's lots of things happening in physics and astronomy and space travel and all that, but I'm more interested in what's going on around here. For example, I'm working with a company right now, I'm not a shareholder, I'm just consulting with them, that through biology 
they are creating some bugs, some little enzymes that uh, can go into a contaminated area where there's been oil spills or gasoline or something like that and eat those harmful hydrocarbons and leave the ground ready for planting gardens. Those are biological and chemical advancements that are helping people. And, and I'm very enthused by that kind of stuff. I, I think those are, they can make money, but they really do help a lot of people. I think there's a lot of things happening. Yeah. So what do you think about sensors? I mean, that uh, everybody say that now we, uh, uh, we have <coughs> phones everywhere, we have uh, TV, laptops and other stuff, but uh, what is next? I mean, we are very developed in this area. So it's not like we, something we, radical. We are we, we are barely developed in barely. those areas. <laughs> there is so much more to be done. No, no. I, I mean, yeah. Of course, <laughs> we can we can do nano things, uh, and that would be great. But uh, do you know that that the founder of IBM said at one time? He famously said. There is a need for maybe five computers in the world. <laughs> now, all of us have at least two or three computers. There's billions of computers. And the, the founder of IBM said, there's maybe a market for five of these things. <laughs> so to look today at, at how far we have come in technology and say, we're so advanced. We are just getting started at the kinds of advancements. There will be advances in your lifetime that will astound you like the advances in my <laughs> lifetime have astounded me. And, and, and it comes from people like you. You make those changes happen. Because of the technologies that you work on, you invent, you facilitate, you make them work better. So there, there will be additional great discoveries in the future, I'm sure. Yeah. And you're all part of it. Um, if a technical guy starts a business, it's, he needs to find a, a businessman in the beginning or hire a businessman. Um, usually the answer is yes. Maybe hiring a business person is, is better said, you need a partner who is a business person rather than just hiring and you're going to boss them around. You need a partner because partners, if, if I earn a salary, I will do what I'm told. If I'm part owner of the business, we will work this thing to death. <laughs> yeah, but uh, it's like you can, as you're a businessman, you know more about money, about this stuff, and the technical man can be uh, frightened that he will steal everything from him. I mean that... Uh, there, you, get, like you get partners. These are people that you know and trust. Not, not just anybody, yeah, yeah, but your friends. Right. People that you trust. Uh, nobody builds a business alone. It takes a team of people, and uh, and so you know this internet company that that we built. I was the old guy. I mean, I was really old. <laughs> these these young engineers that invented the technology were just barely older than you. They were in their mid twenties when they invented this technology, but they didn't quite know what to do with it. I linked up with them, so they, I was introduced to them, and I became president of the company, but we were partners. We built the business together, and before they were 30, they were all multimillionaires. We built a very valuable piece of property, but you get, you get partners. It's not a matter of saying, you're going to steal something from me. It's a matter of saying, we know each other, we trust each other, and we're going to build this business together. You've got to find the right people. So, keep in mind, find friends find among the business. Make friends among the business people. 
and, and what I'm telling them when I speak to the business people, how many of you know about technology? Go meet the people at informatics and radio electronics. You've got to go meet these people. They've got the ideas. <laughs> so they're looking for you. You're looking for them. <laughs> Do that together. I have to yes, sir. And um, I want to ask you about, um, you said that IT is uh, very popular right now and it uh, can um, help us to create good business, but actually I am uh, very interested in artificial intellect. What do you think about uh, this stuff and uh, is it possible to get a good money um, by engineering or creating some stuff? Yes, I think that artificial intelligence is a growing area <coughs> because there is a lot of possible applications for artificial intelligence in the area of manufacturing expertise, uh, uh, navigation, you know that, that uh, Google has been approved in the state of California to have a driverless car. They, they actually have cars on the road without a driver. And it comes from the artificial intelligence, the ability for a machine to accept and, and accumulate uh, information and make decisions. So. I think that there's a great opportunity in a variety of applications, some I'm not even aware of yet. Uh, actually, I'm just afraid of uh, some st starting to create some, something from this stuff because uh, there is a lot of companies, a lot of uh, universities, some, something like Berkeley University, that they already do some some walk in this way and uh, they are much stronger than me and uh, in knowledge stuff. Right, right now they might be stronger than you but if you keep working at it for the next three or four or five years, ten years maybe, they won't be stronger than you. Uh, I'm afraid that they can reach uh, their the goals uh, before me. They may reach their goals before you but they won't reach every goal before you. Yes, they may be ahead of you right now in one application or two, but there will always be other applications and opportunities. Anytime there's change, there's opportunity. So don't don't be discouraged. Keep moving forward. You'll you'll find a way to use the uh, capability that you are you are developing. Uh, and, and in some ways that you may not even think of right now, but will be opened up to you as you continue in your studies and in your work. So don't despair. Keep moving forward. I think it's a great area. Okay. And uh, the last question, I think. Um, there is a lot of uh, things, a lot of uh, uh, good events that were, were already uh, that already have but uh, in uh, in other countries but there is no for example in Belarus uh, for example I'm trying to do something like smart house and uh, uh, how do you think is it a good idea to create a something that already exists but uh, do, don't exist here or maybe I should uh, work for for something more advanced maybe uh, that uh, don't exist. A, a good way to start is to look at what other people are doing and then copy them. Imitative innovation, remember I talked about that. That's a great place to start and as you move into there you will then discover new things that they haven't done that you can do. Now you're incrementally innovating and you are better in the marketplace. So don't be afraid to look at what somebody else is doing and say, let's see if I can do that here. Okay. Don't be afraid of that. I suspect that uh, we better let you get to your classes and lunch. Thank you so much for your interest. It's uh, kind of you to spend the time with me today. Thank you. Please, please let me know if there's uh, some, some additional questions you may have. You know how to get a hold of me. Everybody is available in the world these days. <laughs> no bonds.
Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Minister, we have present for you this debate of our faculty assignment information about our university. Oh, wow. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Good it was really great, and uh, I believe that it's useful, very useful for us. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Can I say I'm an alum? I'm an alumnus of uh, <laughs> informatics and radio technology. Yeah. All right. I will wear this proudly. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very much. <laughs> kind of you. Thank you. This is fantastic. Thanks to all of you. Now, did we get a copy of this? Yeah. The presentation and yeah. the document. And, and the document. The document. Okay, as long as we've got and this. We may share with our students. Oh, absolutely, you can share it with all of your students. And we share a video with your lecture between our students too, right? Did you make a video of this? <laughs> 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 you can share it with all of the students if I get a copy. Can you send me a copy? Okay. Okay, okay. 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 sure. All right. Yeah. Just, just really send me a copy. <laughs> 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 send me a link to the video. <laughs> That's great. Absolutely. You can share any of this information. Thank you very much. Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you all very much. I think, I hope that our students will create their own business because it's real pleasure for us, uh, for teachers, to uh, meet our graduates that uh, uh, have created their business, successful business, and they uh, come to the university to share their knowledge. Yeah. And so it's really it happens sometimes. Yeah, and, and it's, a, it's a challenge. It's risky at times, but it's a, a fantastic challenge. I mean, you wake up every day saying, man, I can't wait to get to work. <laughs> it's, it's just really fun. Oh, yeah. So I, I hope that uh, many of your students will, uh, will have the opportunity to start a business because they certainly have the ideas and they, they have the drive to do it. Yeah. It'd be great. Well, thank you all so very much. Uh, sorry, uh, do you have a card with contacts from the...